Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is requested by members of the Pro Practice Lifetime Access Group. It is the C sharp minor nocturne by Chopin Opus Posthumus, and it goes like this. Today we're going to be going over all sorts of methods to make this as uh, efficient as possible for your practice sessions. I'm going to be going over pedaling, we'll go over dynamics, we're going to go over getting that scale fast and light and airy. Pedal and off, pedal change and off, pedal, pedal, change, off and two and then put your soft pedal down, one and off. Okay, so what we're going to focus on is very gradual releases on those pedals. So very... See how it rounds off? That was way too extreme, way too long, obviously, but... And off. So your foot just gradually coming up. Pedal, change, and up. Pedal, change, change. Those pedal changes are so important. So make sure the pedal is down for each chord, but that you're changing and then you're coming off for those rests. The second thing that I want you to focus on beyond pedaling uh, and beyond using no soft pedal on the first two bars and then soft pedal on the second two bars, I wanna talk about fingering really quick because this is really important, just on this first line. So five, three, one, off, and then five, three, one, four, two, the C sharp on the bottom ties. And I want you to come off with your wrist like this, not because I need you to be choreographing things or doing it for show, but it actually releases and, and kind of coincides with that pedal to make it release a little bit slower. And then four, two, one, three, two, because the C sharp is tied and then lift your hand, reset it, push it towards the fall board, pull back for a very soft resolution. Okay, this is the most, along with that, the tuplets at the end, the, the 35 figure, um, uh, this is the most controversy, or the most problematic part that I see when I'm teaching this piece. So just be careful of this. I'm uh, going to demonstrate now. Push to there and then resolve. Make sure you don't have ghost notes like I just had and then soft pedal down, and off, and off. And just, this is so delicate. I think Chopin lived a very tough life and it's hard to speculate on what he was feeling when he wrote this, but uh, just thinking of his personal situation, it's pretty easy to think that this could represent a lot of the tragedy and pain, both emotionally and physically, that he felt throughout his life. So I want that to really come through. Okay, starting on bar five, I want to talk about a concept of atmosphere. This is a very kind of strange concept, but hopefully it'll come through on this microphone. It definitely comes through in the ambiance of any room. If I play these two notes the same, it's beautiful, but if I play this note much louder than this note, and when I say much louder, I'm not saying it has to be forte. This might be mezzo piano, but this has to be pianissimo down on the bottom. And maybe even with a touch of soft pedal. in the Paderewski edition. He goes to D sharp rather than F sharp minor. A more deceptive cadence. I, I, I truly
truly do love that D sharp, but I also love F sharp because it's it's five going to one. C sharp major going to the stable F sharp minor. And then Let's talk for a moment about trills. Uh, I have a few thoughts about trills. I've taught piano for about 16 years now, um, for several hours every day. And uh, I've taught trills many, many times, and I've condensed and boiled things down to a few key tips. First of all, trills contain two elements, finger motion and a little bit of rotation as well. If you have too much finger motion and not enough rotation, you end up getting loud, obnoxious trills. If you have too much rotation, you end up not having clarity. If you because your fingers are too sticky. You need a very slight amount of rotation, especially if you're doing something like a two, three trill, and then you need little bits of finger action going on, finger activity. And let me tell you, when I first discovered this concept, it was out of frustration because my sister-in-law had better trills than me. She's much younger. She's a, she's a wonderful pianist. She got her master's in um, piano performance, but it always frustrated me because she had these lightning fast trills they were never like perfectly, well, I should say not, I shouldn't say never. They were a lot of times perfect. They were beautiful. But sometimes I would tease her. I'd say, you know, you can play faster, but mine are a little more consistent, you know, just jabbing at her a little. But I looked at what she was doing. She was uh, moving just so slight. And then using the tiniest bit of rotation, another element that you need besides those two pieces of advice, keeping the fingers active and rotating a little bit, don't lift the key all the way. Stay down in the key. That will help to not only play faster, but it will help to control the sound. So. off the soft pedal here and, and it's up to you how much soft pedal you want to use I'm pretty liberal at letting my students use soft pedal if they maintain good balance the reason I don't recommend a lot of soft pedal just generically in a video tutorial like this is because most people abuse it they end up playing like this sorry pedal and then Everything's washed together. So if you're going to use soft pedal, you better be playing louder on the right hand. By the way, that D sharp is quite strange. I believe it was in Garrick Olson's recording that I first heard that and I thought, oh my gosh, what edition is this? And then I looked around and it was the Paderewski edition. So that's, uh, I do like that. And Garrick Olson is a Chopin specialist. So I think it's safe to go off of um, things that he does. So uh, let's just move on. I'm not going to dive into too much other advice in these next few measures, aside from the fact that